this video, we're going to set up a basic scene ready for rendering. Um, the other videos in this playlist will cover and explain a lot of the settings, but I wanted to put together a video where I basically use all of those techniques and set a scene up. As some of you may still be a little bit um, unsure um, about the process for doing that. Um, there is an older video in this playlist um, for product shot uh, setups. This is an alternate um, method. Um, there are no right or wrong ways of doing things a lot of the time. Everybody does things a bit differently. So uh, this is just another way of setting things up, which is a bit different to the, uh, the other product shot rendering video. Um, so as you can see here, I've just got a basic model. Um, I've used this model obviously as a demo object in a lot of the other videos recently. First thing we're going to do is, uh, generally what I'll do is tend to turn the grid on, um, just to make sure we've got uh, the object centered. Um, it just makes it easier to, to find uh, when we reset our viewports. Um, if you keep your objects near the middle of the grid, if you're just doing product shots or you know demonstration models or whatever, um, makes them nice and easy to find. Uh, so next thing I tend to do is create um, a big polygon plane so um, I can cast shadows of the object onto uh, this object. So it basically works like a floor. Now you want to make it um, reasonably big. Um, I tend to start off about this size. If I need to resize it later on, that I can just scale it up as, need, uh, as needed. Sometimes what you'll find is if you have a very low angled light, it'll cast shadows off the end of the, the polygon and um, you'll see a sharp edge on your shadows. Uh, it makes it look like the shadow's been erased off at the end, uh, in which case you'd scale the floor up. So uh, I just center that in the middle of the grid by typing in zeros here for the translate X, Y, and Z values. Uh, so the next thing we need to do is add in a material so that we can blend the floor panel into the background color of the camera. So we can change the background color. By default it's black and I tend to find um, if you've got anything black on your model it will actually disappear into the background. So I tend to try and use um, maybe a, a mid-gray color, something like that. So we just right click, go down to assign new material um, or assign favorite and select the use background shader. Uh, open up the attributes for it and give it a name. So in this case I'm calling it floor shader. <clears throat> and uh, basically what I'll need to do is adjust some of the settings. Now the issue that we've got with this kind of shader is that the specular value, the specular color, is actually linked with the reflectivity. If we dial the specular color down It'll stop the floor being shiny, but it also causes the reflections to disappear. The problem with having a shiny floor using this shader is that it becomes lighter than the background color of the camera and doesn't blend in anymore. So we can have basically um, a shiny floor that reflects, but doesn't match the background, or we can have a non-reflective, non-shiny floor that does reflect the background. So the little highlights on the um, the eyes here basically are the same kind of highlight you get running right across the floor panel and that's what makes it um, a bit brighter than the background color of the camera so it doesn't match. So um, I'm going to get rid of the, uh, the the specularity by dropping the, uh, the slider all the way down and uh, I can also then just get rid of the reflection value as well, the reflectivity because it's not going to reflect. Um, so I'm just going to drop uh, that reflection uh, value down as well. The, um, the other setting that I tend to adjust is the shadow mask. Uh, a value of one will give you a solid black shadow and this overrides any settings for shadows on your lights. So uh, what we can do is use the shadow mask setting to actually adjust how kind of black or see-through the shadows are. Um, I'll generally drop the shadow mask value down 
to about 25% or 0.25 roughly. Um, the value is 0 to 1, so 0.25 is about 25% um, intensity on the shadows. Okay, and you can adjust this back and forth to suit. If you adjust it, do a test render, um, and, and then keep adjusting until you're happy with the, um, with the shadows, then you should be fine. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is change the background color um, of the camera so that uh, we've got a nice uh, color going on. So what we do is press this little camera button that'll open the attributes panel. We can also get to that from the view menu. Uh, we go down to camera attribute editor just there and that opens this panel up. So we scroll down, look for environment in this little drop down here, expand that out. And we've got our background color just there. I've got a mid gray already, but by default it's black. Um, so what I'll do is uh, render off a, a quick test render using the default background color, and you can see what it looks like. You can see here that the color of the floor is blending in with the background color, which is uh, black. Uh, the illumination on that character is actually um, ambient color inside the model's material, so it's not actually illuminated yet because I don't have any lights in the scene. That color is coming from the material. Uh, so what I might do is try um, adjusting this background color to something else so you can see a different color. Um, so I might change it to sort of an, an orangey yellow. And this way you'll be able to see what an actual, you know, vivid solid color looks like um, with that used background material. Okay, there we go. Uh, so you can see that uh, the floor blends in nicely with the background color. Uh, but you'll also notice that uh, the model itself has kind of got a, a yellow tinge to it as well. Uh, if I hit the alpha channel button, you can see that in the alpha channel, we're getting a reflection in the floor, okay? And we're getting kind of some shadowing and you can just see the edges of the floor panel. Um, it's kind of faint in this image, but it's definitely there. In the color image, it's not as noticeable, but what we might need to do is scale the floor up a bit later. Um, just in case when we add the lights, that uh, becomes a lot more visible, um, like a more visible uh, difference between the background color and the floor color. So uh, I'll just jump into the uh, render settings here. Um, the reason that we're getting that color blending across onto the model from the background is because I've got Final Gather turned on just here. And what that does is it it blends the background color of the camera and kind of adds it into the lighting a little bit. So what we're getting is sort of this yellow bleeding onto the the color of the uh, the model, in particular where the white areas are, which is the hat and the legs and the arms. You can kind of reduce that effect a little bit with the diffuse scale slider just here in the render settings, uh, but that can also make your render a bit darker as well. So um, once again, that's something that you can try adjusting, do a test render, see if you're happy with the result, and then adjust as you need to until you're happy. Okay, so let's uh, switch that off. And uh, I'm just going to change my background color to sort of a like a, 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 a pale green, like a, maybe a, a kind of a clay, clay-like material. Um, That'll be a nice kind of neutral color for this particular model. Um, if I was going to use white, the arms and legs would probably disappear into the background uh, in the same way that if I use black, part of the hat would disappear because obviously that's black. So you want to try and find a nice neutral color to, um, to what your models are uh, if you want. So we'll just adjust that. Okay, um, so I'm just going to add a light now. This is a directional light, so just jump into the rendering tab. It'll appear in the middle of the grid, so you can use your move tool to move it out into uh, a position where you can select it more easily. And being a directional light, moving it around is not going to change the, the light angle itself, so you need to rotate this particular light type. If you switch on the Use All Lights button at the top of your viewport, you can actually see the angle of the light reacting with the model, so it gives you a bit more of an idea of how the render will look, uh, and use that as a guide. 
So I'll just adjust the, the light a little bit, um, get it in a nice position, nice angle. And uh, then um, what I'll do is another test render. There we go. So now that I've got that light in, uh, you can see I've got some nice shadows. Um, the light on the model itself is quite nice. Getting nice soft shadows. This is from the final gather that's switched on the render settings. Um, you can check out the uh, the render settings video uh, to to see that uh, that setting. But you can see now that the lighting itself is actually bringing out the edge of the polygon floor. So what I'll need to do here is actually scale the floor up a lot more so it's bigger and that will help to kind of reduce the visibility of those edges. So once again, you know, this is a, a case of, you know, doing a test render, seeing what the result is, and then making adjustments um, to kind of, uh, you know, make up for the, the, the changes in the, the settings to get the, uh, the resulting render that I want. Uh, so you can also switch on the uh, the resolution gate. Um, that's the little blue sphere button at the top of the viewport. Um, and uh, that'll allow you to see which area of the viewport is actually covering the render. And you can um, adjust your camera so that your model is nicely situated inside the render area. And uh, I'll just do another quick test render from a new angle, just to have a look at um, sort of how that looks. You can see that the background um, uh, horizon or edge of the polygon floor has basically disappeared now as well so uh, that's kind of working a lot better the green color is working quite nicely as well um, now uh, if I jump into my um, render settings okay just down here um, we've got our image size currently that's set to uh, 960 by 540 but if I wanted to do say an A4 render I can set that up using the uh, A4 preset. Uh, if I want to do a HD720 render, I can change the camera to that. Um, and I just need to make sure that I readjust the position of the camera in the viewport if I do change resolutions. If I want to render from my turntable camera, which I've already created, um, I need to make sure that that's set here for rendering animations. Um, and uh, also just double check my quality settings and so on. So I'm going to drop my um, quality setting here back down to 0.5. Um, it'll speed up my render a little bit. Um, and I'm also going to uh, drop my filter down to Mitchell. That's going to give me sort of a non-sharpened, non-blurred uh, render quality. Okay. So uh, this is basically just another way of, um, of setting up these kind of renders. Um, you know, if you want to use a background ramp instead of a flat floor, you can do that. Um, so like if I extend this uh, edge. I can basically extrude that up and uh, create like a ramp. I can bevel this edge just here. Um, just add in a couple of segments and um, bevel that, delete the extra polygons. Uh, so I'll just select those and delete them like that. And uh, then what I can do is uh, just select it in object mode, jump over to the channel box and find the bevel input and just drop the fraction down just so that uh, it kind of gives me a nicer corner and it's uh, the floor's not hanging halfway through my character's knees. Um, so, you know, you might want to do a render like that. That's perfectly fine. Um, if I do a quick test render, you can kind of see the difference that's made. Um, the background's a little bit darker now. So uh, if I switch between the two, you can kind of see that, that difference. So um, the, the other video in this playlist um, that covers sort of product shot rendering, that's, it's a very, very similar process, um, just uh, with a few, um, a few slight differences um, background color and things like that so uh, you know either of those processes are valid but um, it's sort of just up to personal preference okay 
Um, so that's basically it. You know, um, set up your uh, set up your scene for rendering, um, and don't forget to go back through. Uh, if you haven't already done so, go and check out the uh, the other videos in the playlist covering uh, render settings and uh, the different types of lights and setting up uh, turntable cameras as well. Um, basically, you know, as I mentioned, this video is really just to see all those processes roll into one to set up your scene ready to be rendered. Uh, but make sure you go and check out the information as there, there might be bits of information, um, you know, that are not covered in uh, in this particular video so you get a bit more understanding of those settings okay i'm going to leave this here and i'll see you next time